Hello and I continue your video. Today we're gonna take a look at my Shadow Empoleon. This Pokemon got a nerf and got a buff. And we're gonna take a look at if this Pokemon still has a chance here in the current meta. Spoiler alert, yes. Um, and how strong this team actually is. Spoiler alert, very strong. Um, and so, yeah, we're gonna have here a very, very solid team. A triple Shadow team because I want to have a bit of fun as well. We're still in the first month of the season, so we don't really need to try hard complete yet. And that being said, I went 8 and 2 with this team here, and I at least could have won one more battle, most likely. And so, yeah, this is definitely a very solid team. The combination of Dragonite and Drapion is very good together. I saw some other people using it before with a load and sand session in the back. But here we're gonna have a different steel type in Emporion, and this is also one thing I kinda want to talk about Steel type Pokemon are kinda gone. There are next to no steel type Pokemon other than Alone and Sand Slash currently around. Ferrothorn kinda is a bit uprising right now, but generally speaking there is basically no steel type Pokemon around and that really benefits also the Emporion right now. So why is there no steel type around right now? Main reason is Clodsire. Clodsire is something that can beat as an Emporion and so I feel like this Pokemon is going to be most likely a bit more uprising in the future as well when people realize how interesting it is in the meta it is definitely worse than last season don't get me wrong like i'm not gonna say oh wow the meta club buff gonna make this pokemon now the top tier meta threat the pokemon that everybody needs to run no it's not the case like it is definitely a bit worse than it was last season with steel wing because steel wing was just a bit too overpowered that's why it got nerfed that's why skarmory got nerfed twice basically with also sky attack being nerfed but um, Metal Claw definitely going to be a very solid substitute for that. It definitely is better than Waterfall still, and definitely going to allow you to generate energy quite fast still, which is really, really good. And as you can see here in this battle as well already, we're going to be able to knock out the opponent's Emporion, uh, not Emporion, Ferreligator there, of course. And they're going to have the Diggersby in the back, and Diggersby is going to be one of those Pokemon where you're going to be able to hit them for super effective damage thanks to the Hydro Cannon there, and I just have to try to get rid of both of the shield. So first Hydro Cannon, gonna get the first shield, of course. I can store up another one. I can swap out, go for the super power. This would knock them out. And at this point, I know already I won this battle here because they are forced to use a shield. And both a super power or also, of course, the Hydro Cannon should have been enough damage to knock out that Digger Speed from the range it is. And so Hydro Cannon is gonna do the job and we can move on to the next opponent. Next opponent is going to have a Clefable in the lead. That's quite a bad force, but we have two decent answers here. With a Seizop of Drapion, it's going to be very, very good in the current meta. Drapion, also one of the uprising Pokemon right now in the play Pokemon format, or at least in the test tournaments that I've seen so far. So Drapion, for sure, is one of the Pokemon that has a lot of play in the current meta. In comes the Feraligator, a Pokemon again that's also very common, where it's actually quite a decent matchup for us. And so we decide to use a shield here. While we have a CMP type, which is not really ideal for us, we are going to be able to at least go ahead and get that shield back now. And so I can decide to go for the full farm loan if I want to, which I want to. And so we are going to be able to yeah, at least realign ourselves, which is very important because there's a Clefable still lurking. And so I can get some damage onto them. And ideally, I would be able to get the shield from them as well here. I'm not too sure we're actually going to be able to do that. But of course, we're going to have now the alignment, which is really important for us because we had the fairy type against the dragon type and we get the shield here as well, which is really good. We can go into the Emporion. We can take a hit here. There's nothing that is not going to be resisted. Every like every move from Clefable is going to be resisted from normal steel type Pokemon. We get the attack drop, which is not ideal, which forces us to swap out of here immediately as well. Um, but at least we have still one Hydro Cannon stored. And I was honestly thinking Hydro Cannon does around like maybe 60% of the opponent's health. And so I was kind of expecting that we would lose this battle here. I was completely wrong. This is doing so much more damage, and so we are going to be easily, easily able to win the battle here. Like, there's nothing the opponent can do to that. Like, honestly, Emporium was so, so strong here. And like, that's being said as well here. Again, this team is going to have a few weaknesses as well. Like, Drapion against the Sand Slash itself is going to be a bit tricky. Sand Slash can be a bit of a Pokemon that is a bit tricky to deal with. But generally speaking, like this team was a lot of fun. Like this team was so so much fun to play, and um, I would really recommend you if you have the Pokemon, definitely try it out. You don't have to have the Shadow variant of Emporion or the Drapion. I feel like for Dragonite, it's kind of important to have the Shadow Pokemon for the other two, like the normal variants. Most likely, would do the job as well. So really depends on what you want to do here. But honestly, like. The Metal Claw buff, don't get me wrong, is going to be worse still than what we had last season with the Steel Wing, but it doesn't matter. Like, it's honestly still a very, very st strong Pokemon to use here. As you're going to get the defense drop onto the opponent, that might actually be impactful for us, because now we're going to do more damage with our uh, 
um, Metal Claw, that's going to be great. As you will see here, the opponent swaps out into the Arangaro. I am gonna go up to two Hydro Cannons and I'm gonna throw one here as well and see what the opponent's gonna try to do now. It is very likely not going to be enough to knock them out, but we can swap out of here into our Dragonite. Dragonite is going to be able to take the hit, it is going to be the Brutal Swing, and we can try to get some extra energy here to maybe even punish that alone on Sand Slash. But they actually decided to do something different. They decided to go ahead and go into their final Pokemon, being the Girafferic, and we can go for that big superpower, doing some neutral damage, but more damage than a Dragon Claw does, and we just one-shot the opponent here for no reason, and also we can now win the Team P-Tie, win the battle, and move on to the next opponent here. So again, this team is so insanely good right now. Next opponent, we're going to have a pretty mediocre lead, I would say, Driftblim. Maybe I could have stayed in, but with the recent buff of Astonish, I was a bit too scared that they do a bit too much damage against me. With Hex, it would have been an easy matchup for us. But again, you could have more steady stayed in there as well. Maybe it was a bit of a mistake by me. But here we're gonna see the matchup against Dunsparce. I can go for a crunch, get them very, very low, and allow myself to align myself, which is great. But it's still going to be a bit of a tricky I want to come back from this matchup. At least I get even another free fast move in, which I was definitely a bit worried about that I wouldn't get this one in, but that's kind of nice for me. I'm forced to use a shield here, as Icy Wind is very likely going to be enough to knock me out from this range. But they swap out into the X Plout, and it is kind of sad here because I don't really know what to do. I'm sorry. I should have most likely went into my other Pokemon here. I should have went into the um, Emporion, being able to at least resist this arming voice. But, like, I did honestly not really know on how to deal with that x -Plow. They can still go for another charge move here, which should still be just the disarming voice. Unless they're running Crunch as well, which they don't. And so, yeah, most of the show went just into my, um, yeah, Emporion here. And that was definitely a bit of a mistake by me. And maybe actually going to impact the battle as well here. We are not going to be able to reach this move. And so, yeah, we don't, we're not going to be able to win this one. But it's fine, we can move on to the next opponent. We're going to have the Dugong here. Dugong is going to be a, a Pokemon that's very difficult for us to deal with because, again, we're going to have a double weakness to ground in our back line there and a double weakness, like a double double weakness basically in the lead here for ice typing. And so we are going to be a bit in a difficult spot against Dugong. I call the bait, which works out well, but they have another Dugong basically in the back here in terms of a wall rain. So we have two ice and water type Pokemon, which is a bit tricky, I have to say. But at least we're going to be able to take the hit from the opponent. That's going to be great. And um, they're going to be still a buff, like zero energy for sure. They got a bit of an extra energy buff there. But I don't know how much they actually need. And we are actually going to be able to outspeed them here. Go for the drill pack, get the knockout. And uh, let's see what they're going to go back into. It is going to be the final Pokemon, which is... The superior, which is manageable. It is definitely manageable. We do neutral damage with our fast move. We do super effective damage with our drill pack not drill run, um, and we are gonna still have a Pokemon in the back to try to catch a move on here, but it did not work out, and the opponent is going to be able to now align their Dugong, fully farm me down, have a drill run, and it is not really looking too good for us, and so, yeah. We're still gonna try our best, we're gonna still have our Emporium here, but I'm gonna call the Icy Wind Bait, which did not work out, and if I played it a bit safer, maybe I would have had a chance of winning this battle, but it is what it is, I feel like I had to kind of take a risk there, and we can move on to the next opponent. Chris Salia is swapping in here against us. That is going to be a Pokemon we can use our Drapion against, which is going to be great for us, as now we're going to be able to resist every single move, actually. They're running Future Sight on it. I see people actually running Future Sight again on it, which I'm kind of confused about because it got a bit of a nerf. And yes, I know for the matchup against Cloud Sire, it's going to be better. But generally speaking, I feel like that um, the Moonblast also has quite a lot of play in the current meta. There are a lot of Dark type around there where you would really like to have this move, so... I don't know, let me know in the comment section what is your favorite moveset on that Pokemon there. Because, I don't know, for me, I feel like Moonblast is a bit cooler, but Future Sight makes sometimes some sense as well, so I would not say that it's like a mistake or anything like this. Anyway, we're going to be able to go ahead and go for a charge move here. We're going to be able to go for that superpower, get the shield swap out, and we have to hope kind of here, I guess, that they have Ice Beam over Thunderbolt. I think Ice Beam is more common, giving you a bit better coverage in the current meta, allowing you to hit, for example, Pokemon like the Clot Sire for super effective damage. And so, as we see here, they decide to go for the Body Slam, and as I was kind of expecting here, they are running Ice Beam over Thunderbolt, which is going to be great for our Emporion because we double resist them at the Ice Beam and of course would take super effective damage from the Thunderbolt. And so let's take a look at this one. We're going to be able to go ahead and let the move go through, try to go for a Hydro Cannon and yeah, let's take a look at this one. This is going to be able to get a ton of damage onto them to get the knockout and Melamar decides to forfeit. 
Well, let's take a look at the next opponent. We're going to have here the um, yeah, Diggersby as well as the Ferreligator. This is going to be quite decent. We're going to use a shield here. This is going to be fine. Hydro King coming through and we're going to try our best to go for the full farm down, which works out super well. And we are going to be able to now also go for some hard hitting moves against whatever wants to come back in. It's going to be the Cresselia with um, the Shadow Bonus and also Confusion. I actually thought about this as well for this meta being an interesting shout. I maybe I'm going to take a look at this Pokemon as well again because um, the thing with this thing here is you're going to be able to have a way better matchup against a lot of the common meta threats. Because of the bulk that you have, you're going to be able to even do something decent against um, something like a Feraligator with it. But not only this, you're also of course going to be able to do super effective damage against Clotsire, against the Machamp, against a lot of Pokemon, and you're just going to be able to do a ton of the damage. And so, yeah, for sure, an interesting one there to run. Here we're going to have the Dagger Speed coming in. We can go for a superpower. Superpower is going to be very, very top for us as well. We're going to knock them out and in camps again. That Cresselia, which is still a bit scary because they are doing quite a bit of damage here. And so, we see a Grass Knot coming through. We're going to be able to take at least one of them. But they are going to be able to fully farm me down here, which is definitely not ideal. This is not ideal at all. They are going to get a ton of energy, but at least you're going to get them quite low here. And it's now all down to the Dragonite. The Dragonite is going to be able to go for that Dragon Claw and it's going to be enough to knock them out. And we can move on to the second to last battle. Horrific lead for us. We're going to have the Tapu Fini against our um, Dragonite, which is not ideal at all. We also have here now the swap out, but I don't really have a charge move that hits them hard. And so I decided to just stay in here and wait until they swap out. You see a ton of lag coming through here as well, which allows the opponent to get a way more fast moves in than I wanted to. Of course, against an Incinerate Deezer, you kind of want to go for two fast moves and then throw the charge move. I was not able to do that. The lag was just too insane. And so it is definitely a bit annoying here because it would make the matchup so much easier for me if I would have been able to align my fast moves better. But again, it's not down to myself. It is down to the game not working. And that is kind of sad. I decided to swap out of here. Hindsight, maybe not ideal because... Yeah, they can align the type of Finny again. But then again, you're also going to do quite a lot of damage with even Dragon Breath and the Super Power here, which is going to be great. This is going to be able to get a ton of damage, nearly knock them out, and we will see the opponent going ahead and go for the Surf. We need to try our best, but they're going to swap out now into the Sable Eye. I decided to go back into my Drapion here, having a ton of energy already. I tried to get the debuff with the Crunch, but first, of course, I have to get rid of that shield, which I'm going to be able to do with the Awkward Tail. And one more Crunch is coming through here. Let's see how much it's going to do. Shadow against Shadow, Stab Crunch is going to be able to get them into the deep red health, and somehow they don't decide to go for a charge move. I think I still will survive it anyway, and so I don't think it really mattered. But this is going to be it for this one. We can move on to the final battle of today. Yeah, maybe misplay this one a bit. We're going to have Drapion against an Elite. I decided to stay in for a bit here as well. The opponent decides to go straight for a charge move. And this is going to be something where we're going to have to use a shield, of course. It's going to be the Aqua Tail Bait, which is not ideal. I can go for a charge move as well, force them to use a shield again. And I could decide to either stay in here, which I decided to do. I thought the opponent would still go for another fast move. That's what I was expecting. But they decided to go straight for the Crunch. Or I could swap out as well into my own Drapion. But they swap out into their Dugong and... I was thinking this is not really ideal for me, but I am going to be able to at least go ahead and hit that super power against them. And so I can put them into farm down range with that, which is great as I can catch the move here. Um, yeah, Drapion is a bit more bulky, I think, than the other Pokemon that you have here, than the Emporion. So I'd rather catch the move here, go for the full farm down with Poison Sting. Has still a ton of energy on my other Pokemon. I can go for the crunch against the opponent. Let's see if they're going to let the move go through or not. It is going to be definitely an interesting one here. It's going to get shielded, and that is fine, as we can still reach another Awkward Tail. So if I went for the Awkward Tail first and then the crunch, would have been a bit easier for me. But of course, I didn't really know what the opponent wanted to do here. I am going to be able to, though, let the move go through. I still should, should survive one Hydro Cannon, and I'm actually going to be able to win the CMP tie here, which is lovely, as it's going to be able to knock them out. And we will see now the final Pokemon being the Drapion. We can go for the full farm down, and this is going to be it for this video. This team was a lot of fun. Of course, Emporia is not as strong as it was last season, but it's still a very solid Pokemon to use. And so hopefully this video helped you out, and I will see you then. Bye-bye.